I would tell people, young people, do not wait to be great. You want to be great today, do it today. Whether you're 18, 16, 14, 20, do it. How you doing, Caleb? I'm good, how are you? Awesome, man. Thank you so much for uh, stopping by today. Thank you for having me. So you were recently elected a uh, state representative uh, for the state of Wisconsin, and yes, you're actually sir. one of the youngest ever elected Correct. in uh, Wisconsin's history. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like that experience, uh, what obstacles you faced, what struggles uh, with being a young person running for office. Being a young person, being a young black person running for office, yeah. Comes with, being black comes with own challenge, but being young and black while trying to do it is challenging as well. Yeah. Uh, on the age piece, you know, no, I was no one ever has run at 18 that I know of in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. especially not for a state seat right out the gate. Mm -hmm. So for me to be running for a state seat, challenge came with that. People assuming that because I was young, I didn't have the experience. Even though I did, I didn't have the maturity, I didn't have the wisdom. I would go to some doors and I would get told that they have shoes older than me. I was like, well, you probably need some new shoes. Just, just, I was assuming. But I'm trying to get over the whole age. I ran, I ran a 100 day campaign. And maybe the first week or so, people were like, oh, he's 18, he's doing things, take me as serious. By the time those last seven days came about, it was like, he's serious, he's going to win this. Mm -hmm. um, our mayor, he said that he knew I was seriously, and he knew I was going to win. We had a street festival in my district, and I had. T-shirts galore. Every, every, almost everyone on the t-shirt had, everyone at the festival had my t-shirt on. Saying, Haywood hey, 2018, vote. Um, and I think he said that when he knew I was serious and I was going to win. A month later, the results came in. I ran a very tough five-way primary. But being young and being black, you have to under, undergo the stereotypes and the assumptions made by young people. And talking media and the news portrayed was like to be young and black. Right. And trying to get over that barrier and understand, make people understand the need. I talked to someone a while, one thing I said was, no offense to any of my other four opponents. If I the one of the four get elected on August 14th, 2018, we wake up August 15th, so we're on 14th we'll be elected, we wake up August 15th, Milwaukee would have done the same thing it usually does. Nothing new, stick to tradition, and we're gonna continue on the same path we've been going down. I was the only candidate of the five that was young and new, and that when we wake up on the 15th, we have actually something different. We changed the course of our future. Right. And I think a bit of people got that point. They understood the importance of electing someone young and someone new. The average state rep in the country, or state lawmaker in the, in the country is 55. Wow. 55 years old. That's almost three times my age. Yeah. <laughs> and one of my mentors told me that you're either on the table or at the table. And I was, none of the young people were at the table at the state legislature. Now, there were some young people who were in their late 20s but no one who was a year out of high school. No one that knew. So it's important for me to run for office, change the trend, change the narrative that needs to be young and what we can capable of doing. Also raise awareness around it. Young people have to be engaged. 18 and 25 is the biggest voting block around the country. Now we don't, we don't all vote, but if we did go out and vote, mm -hmm. we can sway any election our way. So it's absolutely important that I ran despite adversity. I know that me running 18 was challenging because I was young, I know when I run next year in 2020, people won't doubt me because of my age, but also know now that when someone else runs at 18, whether state, city, county, they will be taken more seriously now. It's been done and people can see it. If you can see it, you can believe it. People have now seen it be done and now believe it be done again. Right. And also, what uh, policies are you working on right now that um, affect the next generation? One, we're working on trying to figure out how do we make sure students don't go to student debt. Right. I'm in college right now. Student debt sucks. Yeah, <laughs> trying, to, very true. And trying to figure out how we can create access to education, affordable education, but also high quality. I think education is, is fundamental, it's important. It doesn't fix all their issues, it won't fix anyone's issues, all their, anyone's issues, mm -hmm. but it is fundamental in that process. But two, I, so our capital building is predominantly white Notre Dame, and not the building turns black or minority. Reason being is during the day all the legislative staff, the majority, overall majority of the legislative staff are white, and at night the cleaning staff is black, brown, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. For me, that's disturbing. Our legislature should reflect the people we represent. That's not our. That's not big for our state. I think out of the building, my chief of staff is black, and there's maybe two or three other black chiefs of staff in the building, and maybe five black staffers or six black staffers in total. 
Out of 99 assembly offices and 33 assembly offices, that's all we have. That's insane to me. So what we're working on now is creating paid internships. Internships are why you are in the day. I have some person behind you where I can take internships and not worry about, this is in high school, and I worry about how bills when you pay, how many eat tonight, not worry about those things. We have some send students who go to UW Madison, which is the, the best school in our public school, UW System School, University of Wisconsin System School in our state. I had an intern who, best intern I've had so far, great. Her first day, she did amazing work. I was like, I need more of you. Can you get that, make that happen? And next week, we had three more interns. <laughs> um, it's good. Her, yeah, her mother makes $35,000 a year. Hmm. That's before taxes. So maybe 27, 26 after taxes. She has to maintain a home at home, a car back and forth to work, pay bills, medical bills. Her mother is a cancer survivor. On top of trying to send her daughter to one of the best schools in our state, the best, the, the, the best education possible. The school's expensive. On top of you being a college student with your textbooks, needs to have a social life, needs to take care of yourself, food, transportation, also wanting to be young and be able to go out and enjoy something now. Things that are important and vital for your mental health just to relax. So think about a mother, a single mother, trying to take care of her daughter. You're the best teacher possible. All on twenty-six thousand dollars a year. That's insane. So I think that's important. It's, it's unreasonable for us to ask any student in general, whether you're wealthy or not, to instead of going to work a job paying you for 10, 20 hours a week, mm -hmm. come to the capital, work for free. Some students can afford it, and the ones that can't afford it have been doing that. That's why we have such a extreme lack of diversity. I want to I want to give these minority or lower income students opportunity to work in the capital. I want her to pay you ten dollars or fifteen dollars to work in a capital of 10 to 20 hours a week to work at McDonald's. Working at a capital gives you experience, resume, connections, and it leads you into not only being able to run for office, but if you want to work in an office, you can too, but it builds that connections. You might not want anything political in your future, you might not want to be in, in, in the building at all. But the experiences you gain by being in the, in that space around those people around lectures like myself and my colleagues, it's, it's priceless. Yeah. So I think it's our job as a state to create those opportunities and change the direction of where our state is headed. I honestly believe that we have some, and maybe for each individual office, in my intern, I think it's important for me to have a diverse intern, interns. Right. Um, one intern, she was, I had, they had three last time around, um, last semester. One was black, one was Hispanic, one was white. Um, the one, one parents were judges, um, one was from Chicago, and one was the one I talked about before. Having those diverse interns in my office allow me to do policy legislation, me to not send them that legislation. And they give me their, their opinions on what do you think? How does it affect people that you know? How does it affect your family? And I think in all of our offices, we can honestly use the diversity in our staff because it makes us make better policy. Right. What I see is my problems in my district, I know for a fact it's not the same problem that they face up eight hours up north from my district. I know for a fact it's not. So it's important that I have a diversity, have that inclusion, and for all my colleagues, the other 98 state representatives, the other 33 senators, to have that voice in their office. So I think it's important for diversity in creating legislation, but also create diversity in the capital in the long game. We can do things to fix the diversity now, overnight, but my plan is always to think long game. How are we, what are we gonna do in a year, a decade or two from now? So I think this internship is important. It creates wealth at an early age, but also creates access opportunity that others wouldn't have otherwise. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, doing that. But I also want to add to that. I want to say that you know by creating that internship, I think it also uh, helps with role models because a lot of these kids look up to to a legislator. Like when they go in that environment, they'll see, okay, mm -hmm. I could be like that person. And it also that's all. It starts at a young age. And I think that's very important. And yeah, I'm 20 years old. I think I'm a pretty normal dude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm around the city all the time. I mean, yeah. you might see the movies with you. Might see me balling out with you. Might see me. Mm -hmm. Go for it, whatever, man, I, I'm a pretty normal dude. I, 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 I'm, I got a haircut in the middle of the district. I realized though that people don't view me as a normal guy, which is an everyday 20 year old. They see me on the news, see me on social media, and they're like, oh, he's Kayla's doing great. Call me K2 too, come on, Kayla with the second. Yeah. Like, K2's doing this, K2's doing that. I'm like, what I'm doing is not out of norm, you can do it too. Mm -hmm. and I realized that. I, I, I began to make sure that I'm more interested in the community and I take the suit off from time, the driver pants on, the running shoes, so people can see that I'm just like you. I'm a, I'm a 20 year old black kid from Milwaukee, grew on the east side. I think it's important that they see that because I want them, if you can see it, you can believe it, but even if you're seeing it, you're not seeing it face to face, 
and talking to me, you don't feel you still can't see yourself there. But now I have this internship and you're in my office every day. When you end up at the office, you begin to know them on a whole different level. If I meet you out in public, you meet me, we might have a conversation, we get lunch. Or you're in my office every day, you see me on a good, good day, my bad day, my fun days, my boring days. You see that you begin to learn all the aspects of me. And now I'm more than just a sphere on the TV or on social media. I'm an actual person, a humanizer. Right. And I think it's important for us as legislators and lawmakers to make sure that we humanize ourselves so people can also see themselves being us. Because that's what we want to do, create those pathways. I don't want to stay a stay forever. I want to get in, do great work, and then let someone come in after me and do great work, do better work that I couldn't do. Create more leaders. Yeah. I think it's something I have to think that's about. Not, that's not a mental. Yeah. Awesome. So keep up that great work, Caleb. Well, do. I appreciate all the work you do. Uh, also, what advice would you give? that young person that wants to run for office one day or get involved in public service? Like, what would you tell them? For office, running for office, yeah. anything in general, I would tell people, young people, do not wait to, to be great. Oh. You want to be great today, do it today. Whether you're 18, 16, 14, mm -hmm. 20, do it. If you want to run for office, there are other electors around the country, myself, and other young electors around the, around the country. Reach out to us. Instagram, Facebook, our emails to our offices. Our numbers are pretty much out there for the most part. A number to get to us is out there somewhere. Reach out to us and ask for advice, ask for how we did it. I honestly believe that there's, the way I got here, no one's probably ever gonna get here the same way. The way that Representative Jones in Michigan got to where he was, no one's probably ever gonna get there the way he got it. Mm -hmm. We all have our own unique paths. I think that you can watch those paths and learn those behaviors and mimic them some good things from it, but you, you create your own path. You are in charge of your own narrative. I think that's important. So reach out to us, get the advice, take the tips. I always think that no matter who you are, whether you're three, year, three years old or 80, if you're black, you're white, you're public, Democrat, you learn something from you learn something from everyone. I learn through something I like or I learn something I don't like, but I learn something from you. So call us all, call 10 state reps around the country that are young and elected. Call us, ask us our advice. And we might give you and talk 10 hours of information that we all gave you. Only 30 minutes of all that might be useful for you. But now you have that knowledge to build on and create your own path. So reach out to us. I'm always open. Um, there's, there's a guy who just reached out to me last week, and he is running for state rep, I think, California. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, here's my cell, give me a call to talk about today. And that's important. I know the ones young ones I know that are around the country, just open just like that. Give us a call, we'll help you out. Um, rather it's about raising money. Some, some people reach out, I can raise money, and uh, I can tell you how I did it online. It's not an endorsement. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I think it's important that even all for us, like, we support each other financially. Right. That's super important. And um, financially, spiritually, emotionally, campaigns are a hard thing to do. Right. It takes an emotional, physical, and mental toll on you. And but, uh, those who have campaigned and won, or even have lost, can relate to that. So it's important that you're able to talk to us and like, I get what you're going through. But also, when you run for office, it's, again, it's mentally a draining, emotionally draining, physically draining. Probably the most hard thing you can do in life. Don't give up. Every, remember why you're doing it. Now, if you're doing it and you're doing it for yourself, you're probably not going to make it through a process. But if you're honestly doing it because you're a public servant and you're doing it for the people when you care and you're doing something bigger than you, I guarantee you're going to get through it. It's going to seem hard. I think uh, one thing important is even on my election night, I won. I boo cried. My entire campaign team boo cried. Because you have to pour your all into it. And it's a gamble at the end of the day. But you pour it all into it, and rather win or lose, if you can look back and say, I did everything I possibly could have did, you did a good job. If you look back and all I could have done, next time, do it again, and next time, do what you could have did or could have did. But don't let it there be a next time you have to re redo it. Right. Put your all into it, you put your all into it, and you're like, you know what? I won this stuff, I earned it. Or I lost, but I gave everything I had. And then if you do that, you still won. So, whatever it is, get out there, get it done, reach out to us, call us, DM us, but get the help and support us. Support is very important when you're running for office. Awesome. Thank and you. And you're not ready to break the wheel. It's already been done, so just figure out how we can redo it. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so much for that advice, man.